Um, how are you doing? It is Thursday, 4th of March, and today uh, I am drawing the Backpack Beast, <laughs> which <laughs> I imagine you're kind of thinking of a dog that's about eight foot tall with backpack and everything, but it's quite the opposite, actually. Let me show you. Um, this is Scout, uh, whose fantasy name is the Backpack Beast. And this was Kara, let me remember. I think it's Kara, 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 and <laughs> who sent me this. Um, I'm just going to check that, actually. Just check that I got that name right, because suddenly, you know, you get these moments where you're not quite sure, Dr. Mings. But it was Kara, absolutely, I was right. Kara sent me this photograph of Scout, who who is actually an actual Instagram dog. Uh, and... Uh, and her name is The Backpack Piece, at The Backpack Piece. So you can go on Instagram now and check out <laughs> Scout. And Scout is a 10-year-old Shiba Inu, which, which is a, a Japanese kind of hunting dog kind of thing, uh, the sort of smaller version of them, uh, who lost her vision to glaucoma when she was seven years old. But you never know she was born with sight. She loves... Oh, I can... Hang on a minute. Uh, somewhere I should be able to... Oh... Uh, USB camera. You can see me. Oh no, you can't see me. Let me change that camera. <laughs> uh, it has been slightly stressful this morning getting this together. There we are. That's me. And uh, it's been slightly stressful getting this together. Um, you would never know she was born with sight. She loves going on walks with her Boston neighbourhood, uh, using a sense of smell and what can only be described as echolocation to uh, guide her and if I change that to that then uh, when traveling to new places I love this photograph um, uh, when navigating might be tricky Scout prefers to ride in her backpack and meet adoring fans take naps from a different vantage point it, I'm not surprised you wouldn't want to walk around too much in that kind of right down there amongst all people's feet um, favorite haunts include breweries farmers markets and the tea uh, the girl loves the subway trip uh, <laughs> um, Scout lives in Boston so the T is the um, the, the transit system there um, on Instagram she spreads, spreads glaucoma 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 awareness by uh, proving that disability does not hinder her quality of life and offering suggestions for owners of blind dogs all over the world that's great her diagnosis was very scary for her humans I can imagine but now they take pride in helping other dog owners in similar situations learn to care for their blind furry family members. Fantastic. Well done, Cara. And uh, I feel I kind of know that water behind you there. I think I'm assuming that's Boston. <laughs> I went down the whale watching a long, long time ago. So where are we now? So I'm going to click over to my overhead camera. There we go. And I should appear in the little corner there. I think uh, what's good there we are that's a bit better so I did some little sketches of um, Scout last night who I now have to think of as the backpack beast <laughs> I can't know if you've seen actually let me um, I can't find my phone I will just have a look uh, I'll get I'll get the uh, Instagram up and I will look for backpack beast here we are so we got lots of look um, let me zoom in this is scout uh, chasing a ball which is not an easy thing to do especially without any sound on and um, so she's <laughs> gonna lose the ball in a moment and it's, it's gone behind the sofa or oh, what are you gonna do now <laughs> and obviously likes to um, sleep a lot and go out in the snow and so you can you can go onto instagram and check out um scout yourself so uh that's what i did and i looked at various pictures and i was trying to it's it's, it's quite difficult to um to draw scout as a blind dog which sounds a bit odd i suppose um because most of the time it just looks like she's asleep when you draw her um and so you need to sort of have her standing up and there isn't anything yeah. You know, if 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 I was if this was going to be a sort of a character in a storybook, a single character, this is what I'm drawing now is sort of a bunch of characters. So she's going to be in with a load of other characters. If I was drawing 
a character for a, a children's book. Um, you'd be tempted, you know, for a blind dog, you'd be tempted to, to, to make it stand up on its back legs and become human and maybe have a white stick and glasses. Um, and, and that's very sort of anthropomorphic and it's turn, turning them into humans. And that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm just sort of trying to sort of have a character who, but who is blind, which is yeah, not easy. So um, <laughs> let me get this. Uh, let me get my pencil sharp. It has been a bit of a rush this morning, and I think I had this idea. Oh, it would be good to do these in the morning, and then it's out of the way, and I can do the rest of the day. But that's not going to work. So, so I get to do these in the afternoons again. I couldn't do it this afternoon because I'm going for my vaccination chat today which is good and like I said I often start with a circle for the head thinking that that is where the brain box is if you're wondering who these characters are here last night I was watching the TV and I was drawing them off university challenge uh, of, of well, it was a recorded version anyway so <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm kind of seeing that um, Scout has this kind of octagonal kind of shape like that and and then the nose sort of coming in there quite a quite a good big nose and and I want to have a have a sort of happy little kind of smile and she kind of has a um, an inquiring kind of eyebrow look so if I kind of have the, uh, I think that's actually getting it better than I did, but that's getting it better than I did before, I think. Yeah, that's that's more sort of fluttering eyelashes. I think this is more sort of closed eyes. And I'm just going to have a look at those uh, pictures again. Where are we now? Because um, there's quite a, it's quite a bit of darkness in there, as I remember. And... Uh, yeah, good. Um, that's the wrong camera. You want to see me drawing on here, don't you? <laughs> it's um, it, yeah, it's mm, it's quite stressful getting all this done. <laughs> this is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. But uh, but there we go. I'm committed to it now. So, and I was thinking, there's lots of pictures where Scout has her tongue sticking out in a rather cute kind of way. So I thought that I might kind of do that. And a little pink tongue sticking out. And then we want to have a nice straight back. And then this this Japanese tail, isn't it? Isn't that curly? I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that really curl around actually. Let's make that. Because we can do that. We can ex ex exaggerate and accentuate. So I'm gonna do that, yes. There we go. And and then Scout quite often has, I think it's kind of a, it's, you know, some, some dogs have um, little kerchiefs kind of around their neck, but I think this is also part of a, a sort of a harness kind of thing. So I'm going to put that in there as um, a harness. So, you know, and, and again, I'm sort of half tempted to, you know, let's, let's take her into the you know 21st century and skip her. Um, you know, sort of indicator lights and um, radar, uh, <laughs> you know, like you have in the car, going beep, 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 which would be actually quite a good idea. Actually, you could have, um, you could have a radar, you know, a car radar system in a little earphone so that you can hear what's going. But obviously, her echolocation with her ears, because she's got such big ears, um, she's actually hearing what is going on anyway. So we're going to want this very deep chest. And then the leg sort of coming just slightly back. So, so that wants to go fairly vertical. When it comes to um, getting a dog to stand on the ground, it's it's all about gravity. <laughs> and <laughs> there is a weight. No, there isn't a weight pressing down, is there? There's an attractive force pulling <laughs> the dog down to the ground. Um, and so uh, I think that needs to be a little bit longer about there um, and where are we now so slightly curved yeah so 
Um, so you've got to be thinking about, and I was saying yesterday about the, the, the bone structure and you're going to have the scapula sort of coming in about there, which is this, the shoulder blade. And the, um, th this is the, <laughs> this is the shoulder elbow and then coming down to the ankle, which will be about there. And then this will be the foot and then the claws at the bottom, which are the toes are standing absolutely on its toes. And so this part here, if it's standing still, needs to be pretty vertical. You need to know that the bone inside is vertical and is holding the dog straight up. Um, so that will sort of help you get that feeling of, of, of it actually sitting in the right place. Um, that's going to come down there. Slight little dog leg there. I'm not going to do too much because she doesn't seem to... I, th I think she's quite sort of well padded or, or f well furred. I think I still need a little bit more here. And it's just get, getting this length right. And that's kind of, I'm just feeling it. And at this stage, I'm just sort of sketching away and kind of feeling. And, and I do feel it's kind of a similar kind of phase that a, um, a sculptor would be doing with. And I'm thinking I'm wanting that foot to be about there in which case I need to move that around a bit uh, and a sculptor would be kind of fiddling and just getting the feel of the clay and, um, and just sort of getting you know getting it worked out and then in a minute I'm going to transfer this over to my layout pad and this is where you can start making Again, this is um, sea white of Brighton, 50 grams per square inch. So it's nice and thin paper. And uh, I'm going to just stick a bit of tape on there just to keep it in position. And again, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm assuming there are new viewers. I know some people go, oh, that's tracing, that's cheating. Um, but it's not. Tracing is only cheating if you're copying other people's work and calling it your own. And tracing is a is a long um, established method of getting your pictures right and getting the the balance of the picture sorted out and, the, and all the proportions and the um, I'm trying to think what the word is. Um, there's probably people watching and making comments. <laughs> I might even know what that word is. Hi, Nikki, and Chris Vin and Octavia, and, uh, and Ali, and Freddie Scarbutz. Hi, hi to all of you. Um, I'm not um, going to be uh, answering questions as, as I go through because I just want to sort of concentrate on what I'm doing. And um, so tradition, that's probably the word I'm looking for. There's a long tradition of um, tracing uh, to to get things right and you know there are sort of machines that we use uh, you know we use scanners and stuff like that I remember when I was at art college we had this great big uh, massive machine in a tiny little room um, well it was just a little box with a curtain across it and and you'd stick your artwork underneath and there were lights and you wound wound things up and down there was like a camera great it was like a great big camera with a glass screen on the top and you could get things just the size you want and you have tracing paper and you get it the right size and you can do all that stuff with sort of lcd projectors and um you know scanning and doing stuff on photoshop now so there's, there's lots more ways of doing it but this is another way of just just sort of perfecting the the um the the, 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 I just can't think what the word of it is. It's the, the design of the thing, the uh, the layout. The, there is a word and it's just not coming to me. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit thing like that, uh, maybe. And so I'm going to draw that. So they're quite, um, quite sure how to say this. Uh, she has quite a neat bum. So that's <laughs> Um, I think for a, yeah, and, and sort of quite, um, s sort of shapely legs. Uh, <laughs> so that's so going to be there, and we kind of want to have like that, yeah. Um, 
and and I I, I kind of think that's probably going to be because there's going to be a I think I'm 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 assuming that there is a very thick fur involved here um, and, and, and quite a lot of it quite dense fur so so things like that that sort of dog leg they're going to get smoothed out by the the, the thickness and quantity of fur uh, that's my impression oh <laughs> messages dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, no it doesn't want to hang on who we got crispin says composition thank you thank you judy <laughs> Uh dear I have a hotline you see so <laughs> thank you very much Judy uh Judy who is um just keeping an eye on on the chat for me thank you very much I knew it was composition but just you know <sighs> trying to get things going first thing in the morning so it's going to be uh I'll just get these angles right uh, I, I think yeah so now i'm going to get myself some um ah watercolor paper it's so thick you can't cut it enough i'm going to cut this in half as well because it's an a4 well it's like yeah, over a4 so i'm just going to cut that in half and then i'm going to get my light pad i was just about to say ipad my you know, my brain's not engaged this morning is it i think yeah, I, th I think definitely an afternoon session will be a lot better. I think that kind of suits my audience as well in the afternoon a lot better. So I'm going to stick that over there and that bit onto there. And then I'm going to draw this like that, just a little bit of furriness. And come around there like that and uh, I th dog's ears I find really really difficult to well just come to terms with let alone draw um, and it's this kind of internal bit you know the the, the ear holes um, <laughs> that are so difficult I find now I want to get this right so we've got this quite arching kind of look that I want there and then I think that's just about got it, I think. And when um, eventually I come to do that, well, I'm assuming <laughs> I haven't got a contract or anything like that with my publishers, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of proceeding on the assumption that um, this will eventually, oh, there we are, a little tongue, there we go. Uh, sticking out so I'm hoping this is going to be the third but what is this all about um Walker so this is uh, th this is my book Walker and I'm so hoping to have copies of the second book arrive yesterday hopefully they'll arrive today the second book is called Walker and the mystery of the missing millions it's a thriller um and um and and so yeah my publisher said, you know, how can we publicise this at all in the in the midst of this pandemic? It's just not an easy thing to do. And I thought, I'm going to draw, because it's going to be published on the 25th of March. I thought I'm going to draw 25 dogs of influence during March, uh, up until publication day. And I think there might be a little hint of something like that. And... Um, because I've sort of got the plot going for the for the third book in which there are going to be these dogs of influence like <laughs> like Scout, like the backpack beast is. Uh, just have to think about where this is going to be because this is a um, a check, it's got plaid kind of pattern on there. And um, so, and I want to have this kind of dog show where they're all going to appear. Uh, now I'm thinking that's kind of, kind of mm, yeah, something like that. Um, and so, I'm, and I want 25 characters or something like that to appear 
in the book and I thought I could do this now <laughs> or I could do it later and have to sort of sit down and think up um, sort of 25 dogs to create this um, sort of collection of dogs for a dog show I thought oh well, this would be really good it, it, you know good fun you know, even if the book never happens um, it's good fun but I'm sort of I'm hoping it's going to happen and um, and then I'll have my sort of set of characters already set up and and along the way I thought maybe um, they might give me some ideas as well and you know so, so when uh, Scout I was going <laughs> to I've got an email address which is dogs of influence at she ran a drawing, isn't it? I think. Yeah. <laughs> have, have I got that on there? Uh, uh, no. Uh, mm, no. So, um, but if you look in the um, description box below, you will kind of find all the links and how to send me a picture of your dog to consider for to be one of these dogs in the book, and I'll draw on live, mostly. I might have to do one or two pre-recorded and um <laughs> waffling on time. So um yeah, so then I thought I'd have this sort of series of things. And so when when Scout sort of appeared in my um email inbox, it's like, wow. It's just something I'd never considered. I don't suppose it's something many people consider of dogs having glaucoma. Um and blind dogs you don't sort of think of no, I can't say I can't think that I've, I've, I think I've seen sort of one-eyed dogs who maybe run into trees and you know poke their eyes out with a branch or something like that or had accidents of one kind of thing but I don't think I've come across um let's zoom in a bit uh, I don't think I've come across a, a completely blind dog like that before and so so that was really really interesting and of course Gets the creative juices going, and so he's thinking, I wonder, if, I wonder if there's a story in there that I could bring into uh, my Walker series, you know, and the echo location, all that kind of. Yeah, you just don't know, do you? Um, and this is where, this is how sort of ideas and influences for stories sort of appear and grow. So let's paint this. Uh, so I'm using again C right. <laughs> If you're watching C White, <laughs> um, I'm using C White um, watercolor paper, which is 350 grams. It's pretty thick, so I'm not worried about stretching it or anything like that. And uh, this is um, a Cotman pocket sketch set. So this is a very basic set. This is a really good set to start off with if you want to do watercolor. Um, so I'm, and I'm going to try and do everything with with this set um, because it confuses people if I get another set out. Go, wait, 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 what's that colour? And this is a an aquash water brush. So the water is in a handle and it kind of travels through the brush. It works differently to a normal brush, uh, but they're really good for sketching and doing things quickly. Uh, and, and there are links to all of these in the and the light pad and everything in the description box below for Amazon. And if you buy anything from those links, then I will get a commission, but you will not pay extra, but you'll be helping me to keep running this channel. There we go. <laughs> um, so we're after a kind of an ochre kind of color. So I'm going to get, this is yellow ochre. And I think I'm going to put a bit of cadmium yellow in there just to kind of make it more yellow and just a little hint of scarlet I think just to a um, mm, bit more of that yeah just to kind of make it more um, let me have a quick look again at your you see I was just about to paint a whole lot in the face here um, and so we've got let me go to the um where are we now let me go to the other picture there um so we can see that we've got things going on there so i'm actually going to very gently pencil these things in there so we've got kind of eyebrow -y things like that going on there and there um, so it's a very pale face 
and we've got a, a kind of a something going on there and I think I think we've got a, sort of a bit of a tummy paler tummy and you can't see you can't, oh you can't see me either can you um, you can't see I'll just change that picture uh, but you can see the pores are, are pretty white too so I'm just going to do something like that and hope that I'll be able to erase those at the end. So uh, I'm going to clean the brush again. Clean the brush again. <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do is clean that up there. And I'm going to get something much paler. Uh, just actually, maybe just a little hint of that's just gone a bit dirty. A little hint of that, maybe just the tiniest little hint. Um, and I'm going to um, paint all of this. It's, it's almost pure water, but I'm painting that area, and then I'll collect some of that, and then I'm going to paint. Oh, uh, and what are the ears like? You see, here we are. Let me check those ears. They're quite pale inside, aren't they? So I'm going to want to come around like that and so we want those little pale areas and I think we can go a bit more and a tiny bit oh sorry um, we can <laughs> I can hear Judy and Chris McCann change the camera angle um, so I'm going to make those a little bit darker on the tips there um, so this is just a little bit more intense ochre I'm adding in there and then um, and a little bit of I think it's burnt sienna in this set it could be but it could be light umber or something like that there are various others but that are similar to burnt I think this one is burnt sienna um, and I'm still not quite happy. I think that needs to go a little bit darker yet particularly around here we need to sort of accentuate this this part these kind of eyebrows like that um, but in fact where if if when I come to do the book this will all be done in grayscale um, in a in, in just one color called uh, which I use um, Called neutral tint and it's a kind of a bluey kind of gray there I think that's kind of working um, a very pink little pink little tongue there we want like that and then maybe yeah uh, yeah, because it's a it's, it's a black and white book, so it's, so I'm going to be painting them all in grey tones. And now I can start doing the body, and then I think <laughs> I wonder whether I'm not going to get a picture of the tail. If I go onto Instagram, I can have a little look there. Um, can we see a picture of her tail? I, I went through Instagram last night and sort of trying to find just just one just sitting down and, and there's quite a dark tip actually on the end of the tail there. Good, that's good to know. And I made the tail a bit too bushy because uh, I'm imagining it. So anyway, it's not a portrait. <laughs> so I keep saying it's it's. Uh, it's not a caricature, but it's a it's a characterization. I think um, so that I can to draw the character again and again if I wanted to. Uh, I need a bit more um, burnt sienna into the top here, so I'm going to bring that around. So that's quite a lot darker at the tip. I've made this tail far too bushy I think that's um, that coming around it'd be much darker underneath there uh, oops now I made a bit of 
gone over that quite a bit there, so I'm just going to wet that and try and lift that off. There. And I, this is now this is where I'm starting to characterise here. See, so I can put these nice little pink, <laughs> pink paws in here, which aren't aren't real, but just sort of. Um, Add a bit of something, I think. I like drawing pink paws. And I think that's a, almost pretty much there on the brownness. So we want to have a bit of, um, it's not shade, it's, it's, it's form. So it's sort of building a, a, a feeling of roundness, that sort of 3, 3D-ness. <clears throat> which is built up with tone so um, you know you want darker tones in the shadows uh, my instincts are telling me just to leave that alone so I want to do the nose now and I need to get a really good um, black which we don't have in this set which doesn't help does it for, especially for beginners so I'm getting this here which is the Prussian blue and this is burnt umber, which is a very dark brown. And I'm going to mix those together, and it goes a bit greeny, really. Um, so I'll add a bit of this is French ultramarine, which I hope, and a bit more burnt umber. Oh, I'll just go with that. And I'm going to do a little blob around a circle so that that's the. Uh, uh, that's the shininess and we want it to look like a really nice wet nose so I'm just going to clean the brush and then um, and then let it kind of wash into there um, and we're going to want something a bit darker um, in the ears as well there I think like that up around there and I, th and I think those ears were a little bit darker on the tips when they said so they can uh, the brush is losing its tips I have to kind of get that tip back again so I make that a little bit darker on the top and again it's constantly fading it out um I'm thinking I could still have a bit more going on around here to get that eyebrow look and then just sort of fade it out a bit down there it's also a bit strange because I got got it on the on the flat <laughs> whereas if I, I would normally be working with this at an angle uh, that's all gone a bit grey, isn't it? Can I warm it up a bit? That's adding a bit more burnt sienna to just warm it up where it's gone gone a bit grey. Um, and I think we could maybe have a bit of sort of shadow underneath there, like that. And then all we and then, yeah. So let me think. This colour here we're going to have quite red, I think. Uh, for the for this and actually I'm going to go for a more crimsony kind of red so we'll sort of paint that in there um, and get a bit more crimson I'm just sort of dabbing in that in underneath to get a bit of sort of shade and form around that side let that dry for a moment uh, and I'm going to go back to these greys <coughs> and get French ultramarine and burnt umber and just kind of mix and blend until, let's see, that's gone too blue, maybe a touch more, that would do. And I'm going to use this for shadow on the ground. And so, yeah, if you're mi you know, mixing blues and browns will give you a, a grey for shadow. And, and, and I'm kind of cleaning up the brush, so I'm sort of adding clean water just to kind of spread it out a bit and th 
thin the shadow out. And I think we're going to need a little bit of shadow in underneath there as well. Maybe under there. And quick dry. My trusty hair dryer, and I need a bit more. Um, this crimson here, Alizarin crimson, I think it is in the set. And I'm putting my hand on here where it isn't quite dry, and you can see I'm <laughs> spreading the spreading the grey around, uh, sharing the grey, and then we'll just put these bits of this. It's more blue than grey. Um, oh, this is a <laughs> a grey on the blue side. I like that, just to get that kind of tartan effect. And I think we need to just get the tip of this tail needs to be a bit darker. And that will just let that just sort of fade out there. And I think we can. Just make that a little bit sort of darker on the the back, and maybe in the tail there, just give it a bit of sort of shape like that. And I think I am probably going to leave it there. I don't know. No, there's a little bit. There's a little bit. I think I need to put something in there. A little bit of shadow to kind of accentuate the eyes a bit or the, the no eyes there we go so this is nobody spotted yesterday nobody noticed that i wrote dandelion and not dandelion <laughs> uh so let me get this one right let me just pop back to there so we got uh, uh, the backpack beast <laughs> so i put the back pack beast uh, 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 also known as scout there we go and now I'll come over and have a look at your comments <laughs> where am I I'm there yeah let me see let me see so we have got um, all sorts of things going on here. Crispy, good morning, good morning, good morning. Crispy dry composition, thank you. <laughs> hi, Nikki. Hi, Judy. Dr. Reshma, hey, Shu. How are you? Just joined. Glad to have you here. And uh, Crispy and Dry. <laughs> uh, Sonia Ev, hi, Shu. Made it to the live stream. Yippee, well done. Um, uh, there we go, sort of all sorts of things going. Gymnastics, Andy says hi. Nikki says, Did you hope you have some nice jam? Okay, okay, people having breakfast while they're watching this. Uh, gymnast gymnastics, Andy says, OMG, hi, I always love your videos. Thank you very much. Am I, am I on the screen here? Where are we now? If I do something like that, then I can, I don't know what's on my um, my main facing camera mm, mm, mm. this one is this is i'm using my computer camera here which is not brilliant my main one is just on the blink i can't work out what's going on um and we uh nikki says yay the cotman set <laughs> and uh tj clark hello um judy in the big shed says the character really grows with each prostrate thank you and uh, nikki says well done capturing the colour. Fantastic. Robin, your son, is up early for this one. <laughs> uh, and uh, Judy says, we didn't like to mention. That was probably when I wasn't showing you the, the art. Um, I should, in theory, be able to. Hang on, I should be able to. If I do that. Oh, look, you can see the two side touch. How about that? about that so there we go that you have no questions i'm going to give you about 10 seconds if you've got any questions you want to put in the chat <laughs> otherwise i'm going to go off and have some toast myself um 
because uh, the chat just seems to have stopped. So, hmm. I'll, yes, so, well, I'll just keep sort of whistling, smiling, happy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Nikki says, will your characters be black and white in the book? Yes, they will. And I showed one yesterday. So, um, if I find, like, let me find a piece of artwork from, yeah, so this is a piece of artwork from the current book. It's page 125. So that's what it will look like. And... And I think maybe I ought to do a big, an enormous video at the end with all the characters and do them all in 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 grayscale so everyone can see <laughs> see that happening. <laughs> um, uh, big shed art says that was dandelion. Yes. So um, there we go. Dandelion. We can have dandelion there. Just appearing <laughs> like that. <laughs> Trying to look aristocratic or something. Um, Jane Nicole says, what sparked your interest to become an instructor? Um, I don't really think of myself as an instructor. Um, uh, that's, the, oh, that's really, hmm. Let me think, if I go and do that, no. Where are we now? Uh, just a second, just a second, I'll take that away. Um, what sparked my interest? interest to become an instructor um well i uh, 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 i used to be a children's author that's what that was my thing and um and i visit lots of schools and stuff and uh and um there was more and more art disappearing in schools and art as stem has come in and, and has taken over there is less and less um art, art in schools and i just noticed you could just see it in classrooms. This is this is primary elementary. Uh, you could see it in classrooms where there used to be hundreds of pictures of kids' work. There's nothing. There's bare walls. And I thought I I need to start showing kids how to draw when I go uh, visiting. And the teachers are oh, they just want me to you know teach them how to write in in forty five minutes. You know, and you can't do that. Um, and so I just sort of thought I would sort of throw in some drawing at the end. And I discovered that there was a kind of child who were the reluctant writers um, who were a bit like me. I was found writing very difficult and still do, but that's what I do. And, uh, and I found that if I did some drawing with them, um, having read them a story, having showed them how I create characters, and they say, now look, here, I'll show you how to draw the character. And I'll go through it. And, and there would be these kids who would be really quite good at drawing the characters, rubbish at writing in class. And then this and then at the end they say, Oh, can I can I draw an aeroplane in the sky? Can I have a police car do it crashing in the background? Or and they would start building up a story in pictures. And then later on in the day the teacher would come to me and say, This is incredible. This kid never writes and look, they've they've written this whole story with the pictures and everything. And uh, you know, and, and that is part of the problem, you know, the they want kids to write and they won't let them draw and drawing is part drawing and art is part of the whole process of creativity um, that you go through in school and if you're not doing that you're never going to write terribly interesting stuff uh, so uh, I thought you know I would start sort of promoting drawing on, on YouTube and that's kind of what I did and it's sort of taken over Jane Nicole. <laughs> That's what sparked my interest. Octavia B, is it hard to capture the dog's characters when they're in black and white? Um, no, I don't think so, because the character is really in the drawing, I think, rather than the painting. Um, Maximum Power, 1704. Hello, Shooby Doodlers. Hello. <laughs> uh, Robin Urson, or Robin, your son. Anyway, um, I finally made it to one of these lives. Just wish I didn't have school in two hours. Oh, dear. <laughs> Octavia B, especially when they have a nice colouring. Yeah, no, it, then it's a tonal thing, I think. And, and the cat, that's that's what's different. Is Yeah, maybe I should be doing these in, in grayscale uh, to, to show. Maybe they appear more as a character in grayscale. That's an interesting thought. Uh, Dunfrog, did you ever play an instrument? If you did, which one? I play guitar very badly. <laughs> um, but mostly, I used to be in bands and things, and they, I would sing, mostly. If you go to youtube.com slash flamazine, 
he can have a good laugh for the rest of the morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kane Yo Yo, nothing wrong with STEM, but drawing is cool too. There is nothing wrong with STEM, but all STEM and no art and creativity is, I, you know, I, I, science, technology, engineering relies on creativity. And, and it's not just about, it's not just about reading textbooks and stuff and learning STEM. To, you, learning STEM is one thing. To, to be a scientist, you need to be creative. And all of that comes through uh, the, the creative stuff you did at school as well. The school plays, the, the drawing, the art things, which you might not have enjoyed, but it'll have all gone in there and would have helped you. Um, I'm going to enjoy your breakfast too. I don't think I'm going to get one now. Uh, uh, how do you choose the black and white tones? Uh, I'm going to have to do a black and white tone thing, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to talk it through um, to make them colour, I mean. So, yeah, um, it, it's... Yeah, I'll have to talk. I'll have to do it. That's the way. Uh, what colour watercolour paints do you recommend for a beginner, says Sonia F. Um, that, well, I'm using this, which is the Cotman um, Sketches set, which is which is really quite cheap, cheerful, um, and a lot of people start on this, and you'll find you'll find links in the description down below. Um, Shame Nicole, that's great. Art is definitely a form of expression, just like writing. You have helped me a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having an open view and heart. Thank you. <laughs> Karina says, well, you're a great teacher. Well, thank you. OK, yeah, yeah. it's almost 3 a.m. here in California. You, you either need to get the day going or go to bed. Uh, maximum power 1704. I'm more of a black and white kind of artist. I don't particularly like colouring in my pictures. I quite understand that. I quite understand that. I find uh, I, I am far more comfortable doing black and white than colour. Um, and most of the books that I've done are black and white. So I, I did a lot of colour when I was uh, starting out and did more and more black and white, really. Um, uh, Nikki Campbell says, I like them in colour and think it's a great idea to have a video at the end with black and white with all of the characters. Good. Dunfrog, that's the thing. Buy stuff cheap but effective. Yeah. And uh, and that that's that's one of the reasons that, you know I'm very happy to say about sea white um, materials as well. Um, I don't, but you can't get that. They're a British company, Sea White of Brighton, and uh, so you can't get them everywhere. But they're very very good value. Um, so so I'm always happy to um, to use their stuff. Although I'm not I'm not being paid to, <laughs> but but I do. Uh, I do sort of order in bulk, so I get stuff cheap, cheap, cheaper from them, as as if I was a a college or a shop or something like that. So there we go. I think we've reached the end. I'm going to go and get myself some coffee and toast. I think. Uh, thank you very all very much for watching, and I will be back tomorrow. So today is Thursday. I'll be back tomorrow Friday, and I'm going to do this at four o'clock in the afternoon because it is too much stress getting everything together in the morning. And I have to get my mum up and get her breakfast. And st no, it's hassle. So I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. UK time, which I, mm, I should have it written up here. Anyway, um, I, I'll, put a, I'll put a little post up uh, to let you know what uh, those times are. Uh, oh, we've just got uh, Maximum Power says, I remember stumbling across your channel, draw stuff real easy. Your Big Ben drawing tutorial is what propelled my interest in art. Fantastic. There you go. It's, it's little things, isn't it? It's little things that grab your attention. Uh, Judy says, good luck with the jab. Thank you. <laughs> and Maximum says, uh, says, oh, well, goodbye, everyone. And that's exactly what I'm going to say. And I'm going to say... Uh, and I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Click down there and make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Ren and Drawing channel. And when you do, click the little bell. Make sure that you um, click the thing that says all so you get notifications every time I have a new stream and thing coming up. In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.